Shedding Light on Refraction is the fourth video in the groundbreaking Shedding Light series of educational science videos. It looks into every aspect of refraction and total internal reflection, giving students a thorough understanding of these two topics. The video comes in five parts and includes two bonus features. In part A, we introduce students to refraction. We explain that refraction is the changing of a light beam's direction when it passes from one material to another. It occurs because light travels at different speeds in different substances. In part B, students learn about refractive index and we show them, using water and perspex as examples, how the refractive index of different materials affects how much a light beam will refract. In part C, we show students how refraction affects the way we see things. If light changes direction on its way from an object to our eyes, then the object appears to be in a different position to where it really is. We take a look at spear fishing, explain why things appear distorted when they're partially submerged, and take a snorkeler's eye view at the way refraction changes the appearance of things when we see them underwater. Here's a quick excerpt. This is a one metre length of timber, half of which we've painted yellow. The light reflecting from it isn't changing direction on the way to the camera. So it is in fact exactly where it appears to be, right here. If I now place the painted half into the water, the timber doesn't seem to be divided in half anymore. Why not? Because of refraction. Sunlight that hits the timber reflects off in every direction of course, but the camera will only detect light that enters the camera. The light coming from the bottom of the timber that moves directly towards the camera never actually reaches the camera because it refracts away from the normal when it hits the air and misses the camera. In fact, it's light travelling upwards in this direction that eventually reaches the camera. The light ray refracts away from the normal when it hits the air and then heads directly for the camera and it's this light that the camera detects. But this light appears to be coming from along this line of sight or in other words, from about here. So in fact, the part of the timber that's underwater seems to be shorter than it really is. The light is still coming from here, but it seems to be coming from here. Though the bottom of the timber is 50 centimeters below the surface of the water, it seems to be only about 10 centimeters or so below the surface. By placing two identical rulers next to each other in two identical containers, we can see that from this viewing angle, the part of the ruler underwater appears to be about 30% shorter than it really is. The exact appearance changes depending on your viewing angle. From this viewing angle, it's more than 50% shorter. From above, there's not much difference because the light coming from the bottom of the ruler travels almost straight up and doesn't refract much. As your angle gets lower, the distortion increases because the light refracts more. Because of refraction, when viewed from an angle, all swimming pools appear to be shallower than they really are. When I'm standing out of the water, my proportions are fairly normal. When I'm in the water though, things aren't quite right. My head and torso obviously look the same, but my hips and legs clearly don't. Refraction is also responsible for giving things a bent appearance when they're placed in water. Here, the bottom of the timber is actually about 40 centimetres below the surface of the water, but it appears to be only about 20 centimetres below. If you ever go spear fishing, refraction causes the fish underwater to appear to be in a different position to where it really is. So if you want to spear the fish, you can't aim your spear directly at the fish. If you do, you'll be disappointed. If the fish is actually here, the light travels upwards and refracts away from the normal. Our eyes therefore point along this line of sight, which continues along this line, and so the light appears to be coming from here, and this is where the fish appears to be. If you aim here, you'll miss. To spear the fish, you have to ignore where you see the fish and aim lower than where you see the fish. 
here it looks like I'm going to miss the fish, but in fact I won't. This isn't a real fish by the way. I wonder what modelling clay tastes like. In part D, we explore the topic of total internal reflection. If light is moving from a substance with a higher refractive index into a substance with a lower refractive index, and the incident angle is larger than what we call the critical angle, the light doesn't exit the first substance, but undergoes what is called total internal reflection. The internal surface becomes mirror-like, even though it's normally transparent. Total internal reflection is not just a scientific curiosity. In part E, we look at how total internal reflection has been put to good use. We shine some light onto reflectors to show how they work, look into a periscope, so to speak, and explain how a girl's best friend gets its sparkle. We also look into, or up to, rainbows. Part E finishes with a look at optical fibres, what they are, how they're used, and how they work. In the two bonus features, which have been made with more advanced students in mind, we shed some light on the mathematics of refraction, explaining how the law of refraction, often called Snell's law, is derived. We also use the law of refraction to calculate the critical angle. Like all our videos, Shedding Light on Refraction comes with excellent teacher notes and outstanding worksheets and practical activities, which really help students to fully understand what they've seen in the video. They don't just watch a video, they learn by doing. Visit liakoseducationalmedia.com for more information about Shedding Light on Refraction and the Shedding Light series.